If you listen to the end, I'll tell you where you can get 80 rolls overnight. Hey, everybody, it's Kelly Wilkness, and I am here with Anita Joyce, and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks, episode 415. Happy and productive at home. Ha! What a surprise! We're at home, and you're at home, and everyone's at home. Everyone's husband's at home, and everyone's kids are at home. But we're going to tell you how to be happy and productive and give you great tips and ideas. And you know what? Just hang out with you for about an hour and have some laughs because really, what else can we do? And that's the best therapy. And when you said roles, (laughs) do you want to explain what roles you're talking about? I think they know, and they'll just have to listen on. (laughs) If you don't know, you've been living under a role somewhere. (laughs) So let's be positive in the time of pandemic. Mm -hmm. I turned the page of my 2020 planner today, Mm -hmm. and there are quotes on sort of every other page in my Mm -hmm. rifle company planner that I adore. that's right. You have the beautiful one this year. I do. And this was the quote that was on the page for this day, uh, April 29th, 2020. I am not afraid of storms, for I am learning how to sail my ship. Louisa May Alcott. And I thought, wow, you know, that's really fitting, isn't it? You know, sometimes I read the quote and I'm like, yeah, or, but that one just seemed to fit the times. We shouldn't be afraid of what's going on because we're people are working really hard to figure it out and we're all going to be okay. And I just, my prayers and hopes are with everyone who has gotten the virus or knows somebody who has, but we're going to get through this as a, 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 a world, an earth, a global community and everybody individually in their own homes with their families. So our thoughts are with you. And I just thought that those words from Louisa are Mm -hmm. pretty fitting for today. Yes, and I do believe in the power of prayer, and I know a lot of people are praying, and I've seen a lot of photos of of nurses and doctors on rooftops praying, and I, uh, it's it's going to have an impact. So I do believe that that you know things are things will come to an end with of this. We just don't know when. Right. And in the meantime, we are here with you. Mm -hmm. And we thought we'd, you know, we're always going to do a little decor, but we thought we'd take you know a little uh, side rows, which we sometimes take on these little tangents, and just give you some ideas of things you could be doing at home or how to manage being at home. Because, Mm -hmm. you know, we have worked at home for many, many a year. And so we've kind of got that whole thing down. We may not have as many people normally working at home with us, but we are oh, we have been working at home for a while and have some ideas of how uh, you can sort of, you know, schedule your day, set up your day and how to approach uh, working at home and um, just some tips on things that you might enjoy, uh, a way to spend an hour or more or how to deal with making meals. So... We can dive right in uh, to those in a second, but I wanted to tell you about this very interesting article that I read in The Atlantic, which is not a a journal that I normally read, but I pick it up once in a while, and it's the three equations for happy life even during a pandemic. And the author is a professor at Harvard Kennedy School, and he's also a senior fellow at the Harvard Business School. His name is Arthur Brooks. So I am going to uh, link that in the show notes. I found it to be a really excellent read and very sort of interesting about how uh, there is a whole study of happiness and uh It's an art and a science, according to Professor Brooks. So you might want to have a look at that. I found it very interesting and how human beings are very resilient. And then we have this tendency to get used to circumstances really quickly or or for good or for bad. And we get accustomed to them and we we start then taking action as a, you know, in, in reaction to what's going on. So he says that uh, COVID will be in the rear view mirror before very long based on the way humans generally behave. So that was sort of a, uh, a definitely an up note. That sounds great. Yeah. People are very resilient and it's, it's, uh, there's been a lot of beautiful things that have been going on. Did you hear about that story? I don't know all the details. Uh, so I will just explain it's sort of the skeleton story that I know, but I heard it quickly on the news. There's uh, an, an older gentleman. He, I think he's going to turn 
uh, his birthday is on the 30th, which will be tomorrow, uh, and he will be 100. And he is a, a British gent, and he is a veteran from World War II, and he wanted to give back to the NHS in um, England. And so his goal was to walk around his garden 10 times a day, and he, he was going to raise money. And his the monetary goal he had set was $1,200. Well, as of hearing about his story, which was before we recorded this, so a couple of like 10 days ago, he had raised $9 million. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes. And they interviewed him. So you could maybe Google that or if I'm doing the show notes, I'll try to Google and pull up the story. But wow. It, it, just to hear him talk about, uh, you know, he talked about the nurses and whatnot during World War II and how, uh, you know, they put all the soldiers back together again. And he wanted to help out with all the nurses and doctors that are working so hard right now. And that he is, let's just say a, a little overwhelmed by the response. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, I had seen the headline, but I hadn't read the article. So I had no idea how much money he's he'd raised. Yeah. But look at this. He's 99 years old, walking <laughs> around his garden and look what a difference he's making. So, I mean, that is so exciting to me for people that say, I cannot make a difference. You can make a difference. And even if you're not raising $9 million, you can make a difference to your next door neighbor mm -hmm. or to a friend of yours that's having a rough day. You can make a difference. So it's just a matter of reaching out and putting that effort in uh, to, uh, you know, trying to make somebody's day a little bit better. Yes. Share the toilet paper, share the, you know, mm -hmm. the cookies or the muffins you might have made put them on somebody's doorstep and you know give a knock and run away not well and you know what <laughs> happened to me was uh the banana thing and I've, I've read actually a story about the banana situation where you <laughs> think you're ordering five bananas and you get five bunches of bananas oh how funny so apparently I'm not the only one getting this I've seen it was a story online I saw somewhere uh so uh, I passed along some uh, bananas to a friend oh yeah because... bananas bananas bread banana <laughs> yes Foster. and then i made ba banana chocolate uh chip bread which Ooh. was very good and i still have bananas left over so um, well maybe put them in uh the freezer and then make smoothies well we there's a bunch in the freezer too so, <laughs> still have some. so uh i don't know so but you know you can make a kind of an ice cream with bananas Ooh. and where it's just kind of bananas so you know you can kind of make a frozen treat uh, where you kind of, it's all uh, mushed. So I might look into finding my recipe for that. Oh, um, that'd be good. Or I might just make, you know, you can make banana pancakes. There's a, you, you can do a lot of baking with them. So uh, yeah, but that's true. If I freeze them, you know, I can use them for whatever later. Yeah. yeah. So uh, do you want to jump into some, some concrete things that people can be doing or um, tips right now? Or you got something else you want to sort of no, intro I with? No, I think that's great. Let's get started. I mean, one thing I've been doing is FaceTiming my friends. And I would normally not do this. I would normally say, hey, let's meet for lunch. But it would be, you know, maybe once a month. There's so many of my friends. I see maybe once a month because it's just hard for us to get together. But with the FaceTiming, uh, it's just so easy to do it. And we kind of have a makeup-free FaceTime, you know, situation uh, but it's been so nice to see them because I know I'm not going to see them in person for for a long time. So, or for a while, I should say. I shouldn't say a long time. Could be. But. Yeah, there are connections that you're making just in a different way that maybe you wouldn't have set aside the time for. Or I was supposed to go on a on a girls weekend, travel weekend with my roommates from college. And we were planning it for... April 23rd. Well, that didn't really work out. So uh, we are going to have a Zoom conference uh, this Friday and get together. And we probably would not have done that. I mean, obviously, it would have been great to see them in person. But there are some, some connections that you're making or the, having the thought to reach out to someone you haven't heard from in a long time. So that's a good thing that's coming out of it. We had thrown out to the Team DTT group who – that is such a fabulous group and it has been such a great resource um, and source of fun and information and exchange for everybody involved, certainly during this period of time. But we threw out a question to them, you know, was, what's something positive that has come out of this or is coming out of this for you? And there were just so many great responses from 
you know, more time with family or uh, getting to spend time with elderly parents because you're, you're helping them with meals and shopping and things, down to specific online courses to take. So there, there's, I think there is going to be, and there is a lot of good things that could come out of it. It's just, you know, how it, it is a very scary situation and we can't, I'm not, I'm certainly not sugarcoating it or making it, hey, this is great kind of, but you have to take the lemonade where you can get it, right? So make lemonade out of some of the lemons and try to see the good things, uh, even if it's just a very small thing that comes out of it. Um, other things are people are working out more. I mean, everybody in my neighborhood, I'll be at six feet plus apart. There are so many runners and dog walkers and walkers. You see the same people like two or three times a day, and we're all out there. Um being a more creative cook, all these good things are coming out of being in this very um, awkward situation and scary situation. Yes. And, you know, that's, I found that cooking or cooking related tasks are taking up so much of my day. Uh, We're not eating out as much as we used to. And so almost all of our cooking, almost everything we eat, we are cooking at home. And most everything, not everything, but most everything is being made from scratch uh, because that's, you know, we can't find what we want. I can't get to Trader Joe's without going in the store, which I'm not going to do right now. Uh, so I'm making a lot of things from scratch, buying a lot of gluten-free bread. But even that, it's been hard to find. I mean, I spent days finding yeast, uh, actually a couple of weeks finding yeast for bread. I finally, I finally found some, but not until after I started doing the sourdough bread. But anyway, the point is, so I made sourdough bread today. And let me say, this bread, one loaf of bread, I have been working on for almost two weeks. So <laughs> yes. Okay. So the, the, I can't get yeast either. So the bread recipe, and I had shared that again in our group mm-hmm. and, um, Somebody made it because they must have been able to get yeast. Christy oh. made it. She oh, okay. said it was absolutely delicious. Oh, good. but I have my sourdough starter mm-hmm. on the kitchen counter now. Okay, I'm assuming this is what you did as well, Anita. Yes. So uh, I I'll include a link. It's Joshua Weissman's sourdough starter is what I kind of used as my model. However, we're gluten free, so I st- well I started the starter with half unbleached all-purpose flour and gluten-free flour. And then as it kind of got closer to where I was going to use it for bread making, I just started using the gluten-free flour. So it's a little bit different. However, I did learn one key thing because at first my gluten, at first my, my starter was doing nothing. And I thought maybe it was because, you know, he says to use rye flour and the unbleached whole all-purpose flour which I don't have, uh, the, the rye. So, uh, but I don't think you have to. And so that was one thing I was doing differently. And I was just wondering what the problem was. Well, I finally, I think, figured out the biggest problem I was having. And that is, well, first off, you need to get the scale for measuring your flour. You need that little digital scale to measure the grams and it makes your life so much easier. So do you have one of those? Yeah, let's just take a step back. If anybody is listening and they're like, what are they talking about? So a sourdough starter is another way that you can um, make a yeast for your bread baking. So you have to have, I've never made bread before in my entire life. Um, Stop it! No, I never have. And uh, we have so many great bakeries around here. And, you know, well, uh, yeah, too. but, you know, so this is something I'm learning something new. So, and then we couldn't get the yeast. I'm like, first of all, I don't know right. what people are doing with yeast. I get the toilet paper part. They're making the, they're making bread. They're making that bread. many people are making bread. Really? I don't well, know. they have to, well, they, th- or they think they're going to, because I, I had to buy a pound online. I couldn't buy packets from the grocery store. They're always out. There's yeast hoarders. So anyway, so yeast you can make simply with water and flour and just leaving it on your counter because I guess there's like, you know, I, not- I'm surprised you're doing this, Anita, because what a germaphobe you are. The fact that there's like yeast flying around in the world and it kind of just well, sticks into your stuff. <laughs> I know it's out there You're and you're you're not making yeast, you're cultivating it. So you're kind okay, of getting it to grow in your, in your okay. little thing. Well, the yeast is out there. I know it's out there. So I, I know it's out there. And no, I, love I know too. So Ooh. here's the thing. I love sourdough bread, but again, we're gluten-free. So I, yeah. I, there's actually a bakery I could walk to around the corner from my house that has the most amazing sourdough bread, but 
it's it's got gluten in it so it's regular wheat flour okay so yeah so to make sourdough bread you have to have starter and the best thing to do is to get it from somebody you just kind of get them to share if you know someone that has starter you just get them to share it with you that honestly is the easiest thing but you starting from scratch it's supposed to take i think seven days Mm -hmm. but it's got to be percolating and bubbling but so you're measuring your flour and your water and you're adding it so you start with flour and water and then every day you dump out most of it and then add more flour and water stir it up and then leave it sitting out but to really you really need some pretty precise measurements so i do recommend a digital scale and then a thermometer for the water because um, the water i was adding was not up to temp it was room temperature and you're really supposed to add it around 85 degrees so um oh so it's nice to no have wonder that. mine is just sitting there looking kind of gross okay so that's the first problem but okay. the other problem is it really needs to be in about an 85 degree temperature room uh or, or area and i can't because i have the built-in refrigerator i can't put it's to- on top of the refrigerator it really it said, when i used to make sourdough bread all the time or I used to make bread from scratch. That's where you put your bread to let it rise, but I can't do that in this house. So I had to put it on my counter. It just was not getting up to temperature. Once it got up to temperature, it started percolating. There was a major difference. Now, uh, Joshua Weissman, he suggests a, a fermentation box, or maybe it's called a proofing box or a fermentation station, but basically it's a little heater and a little box over it that keeps at the temperature that you want it to be. Oh, now, this is I never will say this. Work now, wait me. a minute. Wait a minute. I'm not done. I'm not done because <laughs> I did way not too buy much. <laughs> it's two. They're two hundred dollars, by the way. Oh no, I'm not doing that. No, I'm not. I wasn't either. Okay. So here's what I did now because I have that. Now you'll have to figure out what to work in your house. Now you can put it in the oven and just turn the light on. Oh. Okay. So you can try that, but I thought, oh, then what happens when my light goes out? I'm like looking back there going, do I want to be changing this <laughs> next week when it goes out? Because it's been on. Right. Uh, so uh, I actually, so I think if you had like a light bulb that you could plug into the, in, on your counter, then just, are you, how many boxes do you have? Have you gotten at your house this week? How many boxes? Oh yeah, some boxes Cardboard boxes. Yes. Right, right, right. So what I did was I actually, instead of putting a light bulb and plugging it in, I actually have that uh, hot water dispenser I used to make tea with. Yeah. And it's kind of emitting some warmth because I keep it on all day. So I cut one of my Amazon boxes and stuck it over that thing and put, I put the starter in a glass jar next to it and put this box around it. And that's what worked. You're a survivor. I am. <laughs> I feel a so, song coming on. Excellent. So, so that's job. what worked with me. But but if you don't have the, but I know not everybody's got the hot water heater or hot water dispenser. So if you had a light, uh, just like a, a, um, it's a flashlight, in the a nightlight, no, a nightlight night to plug light. it in there, put the box around it. I think that would work. My, the cute Irish dude that I listened to didn't say any of these specific things. No wonder mine isn't working. Mm. Okay. Anyway, that, well, I mean, that's a very good explanation. And we could keep talking about it because mine's not going to be ready for seven more days. But, <laughs> but anyway, but that's just lucky. Just a few tips in case somebody listening is uh, just trying to start a few it. tips. Uh-huh. Another great tip we got from uh, Darcy in our group. And she told us about some New York uh, Botanical Gardens online classes. Now, I went to check them out. And I think some of the May classes have already started rolling. Oh, excuse me. April classes have mm-hmm. already started rolling. But they are going to be adding classes. And I, I'm... I'm venturing to say that probably their May classes and maybe even some June classes might be online as well. I also found some uh, master garden courses and free gardening classes from Oregon State University online. And there's a art class, like a um, botanical art class being given online by Wave Hill, which is also in New York. So I'll put the links to those in the show notes. So you could be learning something new. Um, As far as cooking, I know I've told you all about how much I was enjoying Masterclass. And I did watch Gordon Ramsay on Masterclass. And he is excellent at doing a Masterclass. He seems to, I think he's a great teacher. I, I, 
I don't I don't think I liked him because I think he was in one of those shows where he was mean to the would-be chefs and all that. And <laughs> right, I didn't really right. like that about him. But he's very different, uh, at least my perception of him is very different uh, when he's teaching a class. So I found him to be very easy to follow in the master class. So he has this whole Cooking with Gordon Ramsay YouTube channel. And it's oh. all free. Don't tell Masterclass. I don't know what, why they didn't realize that. But well, I um, think they kind of, he was supposed to be mean for the show. He probably isn't. Uh, yeah, I'm sure he was that. Yeah. He was part of his gig. But uh, but that was all I knew of him. So I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to listen to him, like yelling at me when I'm trying to make sourdough starter. He'd be yelling no. at me all day. But um, try the Gordon Ramsay on YouTube. And I... I watched a little bit of it. I mean, it's not any better than the Masterclass one. It's it's excellent quality. I mean, obviously, mm. they know what they're doing with the filming. Nice. And then there's another uh, resource from Home Cooking, and we'll also have a ton of information about making bread and all other things. Uh, it's King Arthur Flour, you know, the flour oh, Which company. is what I'm using, yes. Okay. And it's the section on their site called Homebound Baking. Oh, perfect. Well, and some of these... But some of the problems with some of the recipes is that it's based on the assumption that you can just go to the grocery store and get whatever you want. No, but not this one because this is... Oh, perfect. They didn't say pandemic. They just said homebound baking. (laughs) It didn't say you're locked in baking or you can't leave baking. It's homebound baking. Well, that way it works for the next disaster. You can... It's just homebound. It'll work all the time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I like being home. Mm -hmm. I like... Well, and, and some soda bread, some Irish soda bread. You know, I was... That's on my list to make too. Yes, yes. And I you know, I know you, that requires buttermilk, at least my recipe does, but you can make your own buttermilk, I think, too. Well, you can. Yeah, it's just milk mixed with lemon juice or vinegar, but, mm-hmm. you know, we're dairy-free, but I do have some other milk here. And you can make it with a Don Dairy milk, so. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, ugh. Now, see if I could have real gluten and dairy. I mean, how ideal would my life be? Well, I mean, so you know standing ovation that you're sticking with the gluten-free while Ugh, this is well. all going on i mean my gosh i i was tempted with a hot pocket the other day <laughs> <laughs> i didn't do it but i'm not gonna say i won't <laughs> I, I put my daughter in charge of the instacart you should have seen what came through the door you would have passed out you would have been like even oh. looking at those boxes you might have had some sort of like visceral reaction and fallen over well yeah. i know and i you know, I didn't realize how picky I was until it was like, oh no, this isn't the dishwasher soap that I'm used to using. Well, guess what? You know, you're not going to get your regular dishwashing soap right now. I mean, I'm telling myself that. You're just going to have to choose whatever they've got. So you're going to, um, uh, what, what was the saying when they were little? No matter what they got, he was like, uh, you get what you get and you don't pitch don't a fit. Get, and you don't get upset. That was ours. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. Like, so that's like if your grandma gave you socks for Christmas, you don't go, what did you give me socks for? <laughs> I'm a kid. <laughs> uh, yes, honey. You got to just roll with it, literally. And, I have, I and that is a nice segue that. into my, I'm just going to say it once. I got 80 rolls of two-ply toilet paper from Staples. Oh my gosh. One well, day delivery. I, wow. Okay. So I did order an 80 roll box from Amazon Mm -hmm. and they said it was delivered today but when I went out there it wasn't there well it still may come the day is not they they said wait 48 hours before you start screaming so I'm waiting 48 hours be patient the clock is ticking though Amazon I want my toilet paper (laughs) and if it's somebody else wants your toilet paper as well Don't you just love a great recommendation from a friend? Well, we're delighted to be recommending these companies and their wonderful products to you today. And let them know your friends at DTT sent you. BritBox just keeps getting better. The new Archie is amazing. And it's not the comics. It's about Cary Grant. Archie is the brand new limited series starring Jason Isaacs as Archie Leach, the man who became Cary Grant. From the award-winning screenwriter of Philomena, Archie tells Grant's born in Britain, made in Hollywood story, the dramatic grit to glamour transformation that led him to become one of the most famous people in the world. You are going to absolutely love the acting, but also the styling, the outfits, the scenery. It's the first time his story has been told in collaboration with his daughter, Jennifer Grant, and ex-wife, Diane Cannon. The performances from Jason Isaacs and the rest of the cast are amazing. 
and it's only available on BritBox. So sign up for BritBox today to stream Archie and other fan favorites from any device. And we have a special limited time offer for our U.S. and Canadian listeners. Get 50% off, yes, that's 50% off, your first month when you sign up for a monthly plan. But only if you go to BritBox.com and use our promotion code DTT at checkout. You're going to love Archie. So head over right now and get 50% off your first month of BritBox. Use the promotion code DTT at BritBox.com. Inevitably, with the new year, come wellness goals. One very effective and easy to reach goal is to add dose to your wellness regime. Dose is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health, potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. That's dosedaily.co.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. Uh, And, you know, another thing that we really didn't talk about is the news. I think the people that are most upset and most stressed are the people I know that are sitting in front of their TV uh listening to all this or maybe they're on youtube just they just can't get enough of the news coverage Uh, you've got to get that turned off it's so negative i think it's just depressing and it's not helpful i think we need to know what's going on so i do have news apps on my phone i do check them you know a couple times a day to make sure there's not something i'm missing that i need to know Uh, but other than that i'm just not uh, keeping up with the counts every day because and and the horrible story of this happened to this hor- this horrible thing happened to this person and horrible thing happened to that person. It's just depressing, and I just think focusing on all the negative news, it just makes you so sad. And I think it just like you said, Kelly. I mean, there's there are so many things to be grateful for, and you can still. Uh, you know, in this time. So I'm not saying don't be concerned about other people. I mean, you can be, be praying for them, be calling people, be helping people, but you know, you don't have to be just focused on, on the, the negative all day. And I think that's been helpful that we just don't watch the news. Yeah. I, I agree with you. Just having that on in the background all the time, is just not a good way to get through the day, right? Just check in once in a while, make sure you're sort of up to date. Even every other day, it's fine. Um, some good things uh, that are coming out of it that I've been hearing about, just, uh, like this elderly man that's raising all this wonderful money for uh, British healthcare. It's this um, designer, I think she's in Portland. And it's sloanwhitecouture.com. And as you can imagine from the name of her company, she makes gorgeous bespoke clothing normally, like bridal gowns and special things, special clothing for special days. But she has turned all her efforts to making face masks 100% of her time. And she's just churning them out, churning them out, churning them out. And she's sending them to anybody who needs them. Because, you know, at first it was just all the healthcare workers that should have them. And we, we shouldn't be trying to get the ones that they need. I, hundred percent agree with that. But now it seems to be that, you know, they're recommending that maybe everyone wears them if, even if it's just a cotton one. And so she's churning them out like nuts Mm. and sending them all over the place. I just think it's just another wonderful thing. A person that's taking their skills and using them for, uh, you know, the betterment of everybody else. Oh yeah. I think that's great. And there's a lot of people in my neighborhood that are making face masks. I think it's a wonderful thing to do for people. One comment in the group, uh, the DTT group, uh, was also, 
I think it was Anne Marie, maybe she said there's power in slowing down. So like, as Anita said, if you're not listening to the news right now, you're just in your kitchen, maybe you're watching your sourdough starter do something or not do anything or not do anything (laughs) right or you're helping your kid with you know their zoom school lesson or something like that or you just have a moment where you're looking outside and you hear the birds sing or something think about how there is power in slowing down and when everything gets going again which it will and it may come back like with this crazy vengeance and everybody's you know when the economies start going again let's maybe remember what it was like to slow down a little bit and that it's okay. And that maybe having some slow moments in your day is, you know, kind of a good thing you'd want to continue with. I think it's kind of nice. Maybe families that haven't had dinner together or lunch together now are doing it, you know, things like that, where you can add these slower moments and just sort of appreciate the people around you. And if this carries over, you know, that could be one of the good things that comes out of this whole situation. Well, that's true. With Kevin working at home, we have lunch and dinner together. And that's been kind of nice. And before he would come home for dinner, obviously, but he would get home so late, a lot of times we would have already eaten, but because he can just, uh, it's because he's working from home, he can stop, eat dinner, and then go back to work, and so he's able to eat with us. So that's been really nice, and you know, it was Evie's idea. She said, let's eat in the dining room, and so we don't normally eat in the dining room. We're eating kind of more in a hurry in the kitchen. Sometimes we might watch some fun show, and now we there is no TV on. We are just sitting at the dining room table, having a meal together. And most of these meals are meals that we have made from scratch. Uh, and, and the bread usually is made from scratch. And <laughs> Stop rubbing it in with the bread. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, it's not, it's not a I'm fast... I'm going to be lucky if I get a box of saltines delivered talk about, to my door. Talk about slowing down. I mean, if you're making bread, that is slow living. I know, I know. When we realized I mean, it was going to take that long, I was like, wow. But you know what? All of a sudden, like five days have gone by already. <laughs> yeah, but that the bad news is too. if yours isn't percolating, you've got to add five more days on. Oh, Ugh. stop it. I don't know. I'm going to check into a, another source and see. Um, here's the thing. You know, I, in the beginning, we talked about you know, Anita and I do work from home and whatnot. And there are a lot of things that people are saying on the internet now, like, oh, don't worry. You don't have to be productive. You don't have to do anything. You know, that's fine. That may be good for some people, but I I don't want to operate that nor- way normally and I don't want to operate that way now. In fact, I think it's better if I feel like at least I've done something, I've pushed the needle forward in my own life or my family's life every single day. Um, I definitely feel better about my the time spent if I feel like I'm crossing something off my to-do list or I've gotten to do something I've been wanting to do for quite some time. And Now we have the time to do it at home, right? So, and people are saying, oh, some people are of the mind of get, you know, get dressed like you're going to work or something like it. I say, stay in your soft pants. <laughs> I don't think Who you have to get dressed. Who is spreading that kind of crazy talk? I don't. Get there dressed is like talk you're going to your this. office. There Are you crazy? This. Yeah, there is talk of this. No, I mean, I'm I'm generally pretty comfy around. I don't know if I go, I'm going to meet a new client, I'm, I will get, you know, sort of snazzed up. But if I'm home, uh, I'm wearing, you know, I, you know my friend's calls it soft pants. She's like, I haven't had hard pants on in a month. <laughs> <laughs> hard pants. Relaxa <laughs> pants. That's what's going on at our house. House. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not. Yeah, forget it. Yeah, no. but you know, it's it's good to you know f- fluff up a little bit, make, make sure you're clean and all that. But I don't think we have to get crazy with picking out you know accessories and things like that right now. Well, oh, let's get our heels on to no. clickety clack up and down the stairs. Well, no. If anyone listened to the last episode, they know what happens to your floor if you have clickety clacked heels. You don't want to do that. Um, so, I, what I would say is. You know, have your normal to-do list if you're a to-do list person and and just try to get something really good done every day. You know, even if it's, you know, I got my Instacart order done or I did this, mm-hmm. you're doing something, get outside if you can. I know a lot of you are listening. It's still cold where you are, but even if it's cold, bundle up, take a walk. I think it just just wonders for clearing your head and you just sort of, even though there's not as many people on the road and whatnot, unless you're in the forest somewhere, you're probably going to see somebody and, you know, they might just give you a wave from a across the street or, you know, from uh, (laughs) six plus feet away. Mm -hmm. It's just nice to see other people or see other people's dogs or, you know, just watch the changing seasons and watching things blooming in the spring. 
things like that. So try to add that into your day. And also if you can work out a little bit, don't do anything crazy if you haven't worked out in a while or, you know, I wouldn't try some really intense workout program if it's not something you normally, the last thing you want to do is hurt yourself right now. It's not the truth. Yes. Right. But definitely do some form of exercise, whether you, know, you incorporate your your outside time with a walk or you do some sort of stretching or yoga or or if you're normally a very aggressive uh, person uh, working out person then go ahead you know jump on your machinery and go to town it's going to make you feel better it's going to get those endorphins going and that is so great for your overall mental health oh yes and i think too really what we wanted to talk about is not just things you can do but it's i think there's a lot to be said for just kind of your mindset and to just kind of see the positive in this and to not be just focused on the negatives and the what ifs and the, you know, if this, if that, but to just have this positive attitude, it's going to be so much better for your immune system, so much better for your mental health. And then when this thing has passed, then you're just going to be in a better place. And so I think that the attitude that we've talked about in the past, it just it still applies here to be grateful for what you have, to enjoy the simple pleasures. Uh, and and so maybe in the simple pleasure before might have been eating out at your favorite restaurant. Now it's maybe making some, some, some uh, dessert or making some special dish that you've never tried before. Uh, maybe it's cutting some cuttings from your yard and bringing them inside. I mean, all the simple things that uh, we appreciate all the time. I think these become even more important now. So I think there's a lot to be said for that. And yes, I think absolutely, Kelly. I mean, I love the the thought of working out, reading some favorite books, having that special uh, cup of tea or coffee in your pretty cup, like we've talked about in the past, and a pretty spoon. All these things, you just want to, I think, keep up some things that make you feel special, that make you enjoy your day. Um, you know, Evie and I love to go get pedicures. That's not happening. So we may be just doing some pedicures at home. We talked about that. So that'll just be like a fun spa day we'll, we'll be doing. That's a really great idea. That's, that's fun. Some things you can be doing on the decor front, you know, you, if you've got some extra pots of paint laying around, you just want to jazz up some doors or you want to do a small project or paint something that you have, what better time? You know, if you can get out in your garage or put some of that cardboard down from all those boxes that are arriving and give yourself, cover your surface and maybe paint that little side table, something like that. So you can do things that you have on hand. You can also do a lot of planning, uh, you know, almost like the gardeners do in the winter. You know, they're looking at the seed catalogs and they're planning for the next day. So maybe you can't take action right now or you don't want to spend the money on purchasing a, the materials that you might need for a DIY project or if it's something where you'd have to hire someone to come in you certainly don't want to be doing that now, but you can plan for it. Mm -hmm. So you can take all the measurements you need. You can spend the extra time on the internet searching. I want to put a, a gate on the side of our house because our barbecue's over there and it can sort of a, a separate area and the dogs end up going over there at night and we're worried we can't see them and all this. And I think it would just look nice and I can grow a, um, maybe a rose arch over it or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm spending all kinds of time that I wouldn't have had looking for the perfect gate and I will have uh, my um, my guy that helps me out make it for me or I'll find one that's pre-made and he can install it. So I've got that in the works for when the time comes. And so I'll be ready to do these things. So I, you know, the, the worst thing would be is, you know, all of a sudden we all get the message, hey, hey, come on out. You know, the water's fine. Come back in. We can do this again. And you're in your soft pants and your hair's dirty and you're just like you're confused and you haven't done anything with the time that we are we have right now mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. make it make it a productive time if you can mm -hmm. well that's a good point because uh we're thinking about maybe having some yard work done because it's some something that we can have done uh, that where people would not be inside our house. And then also I'm concerned about, you know, how can I contribute to the economy? And some of these people aren't able to do work. So we did have um, somebody come over and, and do some work on the outside of the house so that they could, because they're not getting paid for their other jobs right now. So, 
you know, if you can hire somebody, if you have the funds to hire somebody to do something, I think that's good too, to kind of keep people working and, and, um, keep people, you know, get, keep so that they're getting the funds to, to, Pay for right. groceries. Yeah, you because know, just as we've said before, and you've seen all over the place on the internet, a good suggestion is to, you know, obviously um, patronize your local restaurants for takeout and delivery, or even get a gift certificate to one of those restaurants that you would like to see remain in your community. We talked about that in one of the other episodes. Uh, one thing that dawned on me was also maybe your hair cutter, your, your hair salon, maybe buy three or four haircuts in advance if you can do that Mm -hmm. um so you know we're we're planning on doing that with our guy to get in touch with him and say hey you know would this be helpful now they get a little infusion of cash and you know then in the next couple of months you just stroll in and get your haircut when you can and you've already paid for it so that things like that and like as you're saying all it seems like all the landscape people and the gardeners or whatnot are working around here there's constantly people getting their lawns mowed and whatnot so so, you know, mm-hmm. we're in season where everything is growing. So that's great. Those people are still able to work. So that's something you'd be doing if you wanted the outside uh, of your home to be spruced up. Yeah, I think it is a good time for that. It's another good time to have some eye candy by visiting Diane James Home. Diane James Home a sponsor of Decorating Tips and Tricks, still has this wonderful 15% off your purchase offer going on. And if you can't bring flowers into your house and if, or it's winter time and you can't even find any flowers and you can't go pick them up at your local grocery store, isn't this the perfect time to select a long lasting faux arrangement from Diane James home? They are known for their just pick from the garden style. So no one's going to know that this is a foe. And certainly if they're six feet away from you, they're never going to know that it's a foe. So this is the perfect time to take advantage of the 15% offer at dianejameshome.com. So head over to dianejameshome.com and you're going to use the promotion code DTT at checkout for 15% off your beautiful purchase. I heard of a podcast caveat. I have not listened. It's from the Atlantic uh, journal magazine and it's called social distance. I don't know if it's a downer or upbeat or it's probably informative. That's all I can say, but I throw it out there. I haven't had a chance to listen to it yet, but when I was checking out that article that I told you about in the beginning from the Atlantic, they had mentioned that podcast. So I have it on my list to try and see if I like it. If anybody knows of any other podcast that they're enjoying, I would very much appreciate an email to us with the name of the show because I am walking my little doggies. Their little paws are going to fall off. We do so much walking. Uh, And I'm really enjoying uh, the ones that are in my library, but sometimes it's hard to find good podcasts. That's why we always say to you guys, if you have the time, rate and review us, because that is the way that you can really discern whether or not uh, you're going to enjoy a podcast, A, but also it's the way that iTunes decides whether or not they're going to offer them up to you. So there are gazillions of podcasts you might not even know about unless you hear about it from word of mouth if iTunes isn't really serving them up to you. So that, you know, I would really love to hear about some other podcasts. The one I told you about, Phoebe Reads. Okay, so I finished, she finished reading the first Agatha Christie book and I listened to that. And now she's uh, reading The Hounds of Baskerville by Sherlock Holmes. And that is a fun one to listen to. I've, I I don't even know if I ever read that book, but you know I you know generally know this story. But she's just got a great voice, and uh, you know obviously the the writing is so good, and it's just it, and it's yeah, it's so descriptive. It's very enjoyable. So I highly recommend Phoebe Reads. Well, that sounds fun. And the other thing I wanted to mention, just like there's so many. Uh, restaurants now that you can do curbside that may not have been offering it before check out some of your favorite shops i know one of the local stores here down the street from me uh called jubilee it's a clothing store they're letting people there she kind of is doing tours in the store on facebook and then people pick out things and then they can buy it i guess over the phone and then she brings them out to her their car so i mean check that out and for example uh you, we've talked about Ikea, and I don't think you used to be able to buy their things online, but there were a few cups and saucers and little bowls that I wanted from them. And guess what? I was able to buy them online. 
and have them shipped for, you know, not a lot of money to my house. So I was very excited about that, that I was able to do that. Yeah, we'll get back there one day soon, Anita. So tell us about our hot topic today. <laughs> okay, this is navigating your life during coronavirus. And this is from the Wall Street Journal. And so this is really talking about uh, dealing with life from home. It's talking about uh, kind of how you can, so it's just a bunch of things in this particular article. But I mean, the two at the top were kind of how to encourage your, your uh, peers your workmates uh, from a distance. And then the second topic was kind of having a, a desk, kind of dealing with your desk at home. And I did want to mention that uh, I think it's a great time if you don't have one to get a standing desk. I know Kevin brought his standing desk from the office home and it's been so good for someone who's sitting at the desk all day. It's so nice that he can use it. To... So I didn't know when I first started hearing about standing desks, what they were. I thought that they were just a really tall desk. What I didn't know is that it's kind of like a tray that goes on top of your desk and it's got some grippers on either side. And you, when you squeeze those, you can raise it or lower it to the height that you want and then you let go and that's and it stays. So you can use it sitting down, but then you just grab it to pull it up if you want to stand for a little while. And, you know, like if your back is hurting or if you've just been sitting for a long time and you need to change positions, I think it's a great thing to have. And then we also got one of those chef's mats. Uh, I don't know what else to call it, but it's kind of like a, a rug, but it's cushioned because so, it's for standing on for long periods of time. So you can stand on that. Uh, and use your standing desk, and then your legs and your back are not going to get fatigued. So that's something, it's not necessarily something pretty, but very practical if you are having to work from home. Yeah, no, it's all good stuff. I, I, I'm, all those little things really make a difference, I'm sure. If you're not sitting properly or hunched over all day, and if you're, and if you're used to going to an office, you're, you're getting up, you're going to a meeting in somebody else's room, or you're going out for lunch or you're doing something like that. So it might be a really uh, different experience for people that don't work from home normally. And so these are all good things. Yeah. I mean, that's what he said was he found he was sitting much more than he normally does because normally he's walking to other offices and going out to get lunch and just, you know, everything, meeting rooms or, you know, a walk from his office and all of that is just gone because yeah. everything's just at your desk now. Right, right. Uh, it's a great article. It, it, wow, it covers so much. So I definitely a good read for everyone. Crushes. I've got a podcast crush, which was always something I was so happy to catch on the radio if I was driving the car and I happened to turn on the radio and it was on. I never really know when it was on or whatnot. Yes. But what it's called it? Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. Oh, I used to watch, not watch. I used to, I've been listening to that for years and years. I used to listen to it on the radio. Yes, yes. I know all about it. Yes. So Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me is a podcast now. Yes, it is. It is. And then I think he does some best ofs or maybe certain, uh, and, and they do kind of different twists like uh, Mo Rocca. Maybe they did do a montage of his stuff or somebody else. And uh, yeah, it's very interesting. Oh, yeah, no, I, it's great. I've been listening to the show straight through. So if anybody doesn't okay. know what it is, it's the NPR News Quiz, and it's with this host, Peter Siegel, Sagel, and he's great. And uh, it's just a lot of fun, and they'll bring in some, you know, I don't want to, they're like no more than known by sums, but they're like comedians or just people that you might know, sort of maybe B-list, I don't know, celebrities, what do you think? Is You know, it's well, not like they don't have Beyonce or anybody on they're there. They're not they, really actresses so right. much, it's more like comedians, so yeah. they're not... Yeah, I mean, not some, uh, you know, the star of some a movie that right. probably wouldn't be. And most be of it. them Paula know. Poundstone. Right. You know, known, yeah. Known, but known by some, as a friend yeah. of mine calls them. But, <laughs> um, and they, they, to differing degrees, they are aware of what's going on in the news. I mean, some people are really on it. And they'll just have these funny things and they make up limericks and whatnot. You just have to listen to it to really experience. But it's a lot of fun. I do find myself laughing out loud almost every single time. So wait, wait, don't tell me. NPR News Quiz Podcast. I'll put the link in the show notes. Yeah, I mean, and it's low budget. I mean, I think the they do have a call-in uh, quiz and the uh, the prize used to be the uh, announcer would do their their uh, message on their answering machine. Yes. I don't know if he still does that, but oh, that's that, what it used to be. That's it. That's it. It's still that? Okay, uh -huh. wow. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. 
pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well, and we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free, that's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold of the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Interesting. It's it's, it's a little tongue-in-cheek. Tongue in it's uh, And also, I mean, it, you know, you, you do want to know your news when you're listening because you, you want to be able to answer the questions too, but it's fun. Uh, what's your crush? My crush, uh, of course, is going to be food-related for now because I'm learning all these new ways to cook and and figuring new things out, I got an air fryer. Somebody told me, get it, you'll love it. And you know, I'm not a gadget person. So I don't just like buying gadgets because I find that a lot of them, you end up using them for a week and then you're kind of done with it. But the air fryer, I like the idea of it because you can kind of have the texture of fried food and the flavor without so much oil. And uh, so I... I got it. And it's it's very good. It's done a great job. So it's perfect. All I've used it for so far are potatoes. But I know Paula Dean was showing on one of her videos how to do fried pies in there. Um, so a I mean, fried pie? Yes. It's kind of a Virginia, <laughs> North Carolina thing. Okay. okay. Kind of that part of the okay. southeastern part of the U.S. That's kind of a, yes. I mean, Kevin's aunt used to make them. and. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they're but this doesn't have all the oil in it, so it would be much wow. healthier to to make. Yeah, so you just kind of yeah, your dough, you put some uh, pie filling in, fold it over, and put it in the air fryer. You're done. Wow. So yeah, pretty easy cooking. Yeah. So, uh, but you can fry other things like um, I guess somebody talked about frying chicken in there. Now I haven't done anything else, but yeah, it's something that you would want crisp. So okay. I should say that. So you can't use it for just anything, but. Yes, so I have used it, and so far, so good. Thumbs up, and I'm I'm excited that I have it. Oh, good for you. So um, send me the link, and I'll put that in the show notes. Mm-hmm. Okay, our question today is from Stacia V. Stacia is expecting her first baby. Oh, yay! 
we're so very excited, but this is not a baby centric question. Although she did um, ask whether or not we might do an episode about nursery room decor. And we have had a few people ask about that and also sort of transitioning a kid's room to an older kid's room or changing, uh, you know, a uh, teen room into sort of like a more of a family game room. So we could probably put an episode together with all those things. But Stasia's question to us right now is about her kitchen ceiling. So they're doing a lot of work in this uh, their house and maybe getting ready for the baby and whatnot. And they were thinking about doing some textured work on the ceiling. And when she's saying textured, she actually used the word planking and things like that. So not textured like She's not suggesting the popcorn ceiling. But no, no, no. I, is she talking about the texture? Because if they put the planking, they might not. They might or they might not. So they, it might be showing. Isn't that what she's saying? She's. I think she's saying whether just to keep it sheetrock or whether to do some treatment on the ceiling. Well, I okay. So I read the question too. And I think she, I thought the question was, mm-hmm. should we use texture or not? Because we're thinking about planking it, but we might not. So it might be showing. Was kind oh. of what that, Okay, well, let's answer it both ways then. Okay, well, that's the way I'm going to answer it. Okay, and then and I'm going to answer, answer it again. my way. Darn yeah, it. you answer it your way, and I'll okay, do it my way. So I'm doing mine first. So Stacia, okay. if you are thinking about either just doing straight up sheetrock, a smooth ceiling, I think that's really great and nice. Um, it it it's not going to take away from any of your look but if you do some sort of treatment on the ceiling it can add to a look we don't know anything about the house or your overall style planking is you know it can depending on the way it's done if especially if it's a sort of uh sort of uneven boards or boards that might have a little nick or a knot or something like that it evokes more of a casual farmhouse type of look. So if that's the look you're going for, I think planking in the ceiling could be really nice. Um, You'll have to work it in with whatever kind of molding you've got, obviously. So if you guys could do that on your own or somebody can help you do that, I don't think it's very complicated to um, install planking. I use the packets of planking from Lowe's. Um, I think it's called Everbright and they were very inexpensive. So that's what I used in several rooms in my house. And I really like the way it turned out. Um, I always say the ceiling is the fifth wall. And if you can do something special up there, particularly if you've got an all white kitchen, I say go for it. Now, the second possibility version of your (laughs) question is being addressed by Anita. Yes, yes. So so what to do with the ceiling if you are not doing any kind of planking or anything or covering it up? I would suggest uh, no. I don't really care for texturing because I feel like it's a little... um, limiting like if you were to want to do wallpaper later on it's it's a problem and i think sometimes people are overzealous uh, contractors i don't mean homeowners but contractors are overzealous with the um with the texturing so i prefer little to no texture now so i mean if you have to use some then you can put a little bit on but i really don't feel like it adds anything to the room uh, so I'm kind of in the no texture camp. Or if you really feel like you want to add some, then I would add very little. So I don't really see the need. I don't think it really, especially on the ceiling. What if you wanted to put wallpaper up there later? It'd be better if it didn't have it. So then you don't have to scrape it off. So there you go. Because that's one of the things we suggested. Excellent. So you've, we've covered it all, Stacia. So I hope we helped you. And I don't know when this darling baby of yours is due, but we wish you the best of luck with that. It's going to be a wonderful, wonderful addition to your life. Oh, oh a little I baby. Know. I'm just, I'm smelling your baby's head right now. Oh, oh. I love babies. <laughs> I know, I know. So oh cute. my goodness. So we're so excited for you. Yes, yes. Oh, and uh, thanks for hanging out with us today. Remember, we're here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. I want to remind you that we are available for design consults. We take on your design dilemmas, questions, renovations, any project you want to talk about, any room, any space, we are here for you. And we really do enjoy doing these. And I think we've helped people a lot. So if you want to sign up for a consult, head to the link in the show notes. It's decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash consult. We hope to talk to you soon. 